today we're looking at the essay. The essay is worth 25 marks and it appears on paper three. If you nail the essay, you've basically got an E grade on that paper. I think on last year's 2017 paper, basically you only needed 19 marks to get an E on that paper. If you got 25 marks, you're straight into that grade band. Just last week, I was at a seminar at the annual science conference at Liverpool University, and the seminar was really interesting. Some really interesting points came out of it. I'll discuss those later. First of all, let's have a look at how the essay is marked. When marking the essay, AQA tells you to read the whole essay through and then to look. Does it fit in this lower band? If it fits in the lower band, we then ask the question, can it move to the next band? If it fits in that, can we move to the next band? And so on. The consequence of that is that you could have an amazing essay that fit largely in this band, but if you've got elements of it that are missing, you may get no higher than the first band. So what do I mean by that? What could be missing? Well, AQA want you to have at least four topics covered. And the topics have to be from different areas of the specification. So to give you an example, last year, the essay title was about the importance of diffusion. Now that actually lends itself largely to one part of the specification. So students wrote four or five paragraphs but they all appeared in the same part of the specification. So although they wrote amazing essay on all the different uh, types of diffusion in the body and the importance of it, the fact that it was all from one part of the specification meant that they couldn't get higher than 10 marks. Now the advice is to write five or six paragraphs. And the reason why we give that advice is because if two of them belong to the same part of the specification and you've only written four, you're not going to get higher than 10 marks. By writing five or six, if some of them do appear in the same, same part of the specification, your chances are increased. Your biggest enemy to success is irrelevance. If you start banging on about parts of the topic that aren't relevant to the importance of whatever it is you're writing about proteins, for example, or shape or movement in biology. If you add those irrelevant topics, then again, the highest mark you can achieve is 10. And you can see that here, it says, may contain a number of significant errors and or irrelevant topics. So you need to stay away from waffle. Let's read through the different grade boundaries and see what they actually mean, let's interpret them. If we look at the first one, it says a response is only indirectly addresses the theme of the question and merely presents a series of biological facts which are usually descriptive in nature or poorly explained and at times might be factually incorrect. So the kind of work I've had from students like that is very fluffy, they, it's very superficial, it glosses over the topic without any real detail in there, without any real detail that suggests they've been to A-level biology class. One of the things I always tell my students is that we need to pick a topic, we need to make sure after those two choices that we've got, that we're picking one that the layman couldn't write. In other words, somebody on the street might know a lot about global warming and carbon dioxide and be able to write a very good essay anyway. We need to show that we've been to A-level biology class and that we've got something different than the average person on the street. Now this is another big one. Content and terminology is generally below A-level. That's difficult for you. It's difficult for you because you haven't done the latest GCSE. Year 11 are doing the first GCSE now and it's changed. It now includes um, stuff about transcription and translation, things that used to be in A-level. You've got to have A-level content. Any information that's in there, any introductory sentences or fluffy stuff, don't write it because there are no marks. And if you have a lot of that, you could be considered to be generally below A-level and therefore the highest mark you would get would be five. When you write your essay, there is no need for an introductory paragraph. There is no need for a summary. What we need is four or five hardcore A-level paragraphs on whatever the subject, whatever, whatever your essay title is. And the first sentence should pack a punch straight into A-level content. Remember when you're choosing your essay title, 
to perhaps choose the more difficult one because again, the more difficult essay title will be one that the average person on the street couldn't write and you have to show that in-depth knowledge, that in-depth detail of biology. The next band up says that the response predominantly deals with only one or two topics that relate to the question. That can mean two things. One of my students, for instance, in the recent mock exams, he wrote a fabulous essay on proteins. The title was uh, to explain the importance of proteins in the body. Basically, he wrote me an essay on the role of proteins in the body. He didn't talk about the importance. He entered into the importance in one or two paragraphs and so the maximum mark he could get was a 10. Another way that can be explained is if in, in 2017, for instance, what happened, the essay title was on the importance of diffusion. And as I just mentioned earlier, all the examples that the students gave were in one part of the specification. Each paragraph needs to come from a distinct region of the specification. So assuming you've met the criteria for the first band, you've entered the second band, we're now looking at the third band, maximum mark of 15. It says the response mostly deals with suitable topics, but they are inter not interrelated and links are not made to the theme of the question. So what does that mean? They, links are not made. It is not expected that one paragraph will link to the next and link to the next and link to the next. You can do discrete individual paragraphs as long as they link individually to the question. And the question for the next few years is always gonna be about the importance of, okay? So we have to hang on that. And again, remembering that when we're talking about the importance, the easiest way to think about it is, what would happen if we didn't have it? So we can talk about the role of proteins, but what about if we didn't have, for example, with antibodies, we didn't have the shape, we didn't have that variable, variable region to fit with the antigens. So when we're thinking about the importance, we're thinking about what would happen if we didn't have it, but we're thinking about what would happen to that process or that phenomena in the body. Otherwise, what we end up doing is we always end up saying, and if you didn't have it, you die. And of course, that lacks a great deal of detail, explanation, and sophistication. So what we're always looking for, what would happen to that process if we didn't have that thing? So for example, um, in one essay, they were talking about respiration and the importance of uh, oxygen. And at one end of the spectrum, students would say, we need oxygen because if we haven't got it, then basically uh, you haven't got your terminal electronic sector um, and therefore respiration couldn't happen. Other students said, if you don't have oxygen, you'll die. So you have to be focusing then on the importance and not just the role. To make sure that we get into this band, one of the things that we can do is make sure that we've got lots of A-level terminology in there. That's something that can, can happen when you plan your essay. Remember that your essay should take no more than about 34 minutes to actually write and it gives you a couple of minutes therefore to plan the essay and you should be bashing in all that excellent A-level terminology that you know, let's get using it. To get used to using it, one of the things you need to do is you need to own it. To own it, you need to discuss biology. You need to turn those written words into movement and your lips, into your motor memory, so that it actually becomes part of your own vocabulary. The mark schemes for the essays are actually quite forgiving. Let's have a look. You can get 20 marks with this description. That the response links several topics to the main theme of the question, in other words, at least four, to form a series of interrelated points which are clearly explained. In each paragraph, you're straight into A-level content and you zoom in using uh, some detail of some areas within that paragraph to show that you're at A-level. There shouldn't be any GCSE sentences in there at all. Biology is fundamentally correct A-level content and contains some points which are detailed, though there may be some which are less well developed with appropriate use of terminology. So that basically means that if you've got your four paragraphs, some are in more detail than others, that's okay. You can still get those higher marks. 
perhaps one significant error and or one irrelevant topic which detracts from the overall quality of the answer. So that's actually quite a forgiving mark scheme and really we should be aiming for a plus or minus 20, I think. The mean score is 14 for the essay um, across the board and that's actually quite low. You only need 19 marks out of the 25 and you've actually got an E on that paper. So how hard can it be to get into that upper band and to get to the upper reaches of the upper band? Well, let's have a look. The response shows a holistic approach to the question. It's always talking about the importance, what would happen if you did not have it, what would happen to the process, not to the organism. What would happen to the process of immunity if you didn't have the variable region on an antibody? That's what we're focusing on. The biology is detailed and comprehensive A-level content. No GCSE, don't waste your time, there's no marks. Don't waste your time with an introduction or a summary, no marks. They want you to go straight in with A-level content. Um, very well written and always clearly explained. So often students will write a sentence but they then won't explain the implications of it. No significant errors or irrelevant materials and for top marks in the band, the answer shows evidence of reading beyond the specification requirements. If you look at the legacy material, the sum topics that are taken out of the old subject that don't include, uh, aren't included in the new. So for example, one topic is the immunological comparison of proteins when trying to look at the phylogenetic relationship of organisms. So if you chose four or five different areas, they can come from how science works from the old textbook or from the old specification, then that's an excellent way, especially something about proteins, about shape, about movement, these things always come up and you're then looking at five different areas that you could embed into lots of different essays and that would mean that if you are able to get into that upper band you can get to the upper reaches of that upper band. Let's just recap on what we've said. Four topics minimum. We tell students to go to five or six just in case two topics are from the same area of the specification because those four topics have to be from completely different areas. Each of them needs to be straight into A-level content, no GCSE, no fluffy stuff. Be aware of irrelevance because that will limit you to 10 marks. Make sure you're answering the question. We're talking about the importance of, not the role of. To talk about the importance, how do we do it? We talk about what would happen if you didn't have it. We're not talking about what would happen to the organism, we're talking about what would happen to the process. How would that interrupt the process? And that is how you'll get the higher marks for your A-level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at some uh, previous examples of students' work and we'll look at how we achieved that mark.